All right. Well, hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium live here on Twitch and YouTube. My name is Emily. I am part of the social media team here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. As always, joined by my good friend, my buddy, my colleague, my terrible boy, Pat. <laughs> Pat, how are you today? Your terrible boy my as terrible well. Boy. <laughs> not just not. Uh, I'm shared amongst the community there, Emily. Yes, hello everyone. This is Pat, your terrible boy, uh, joining you from my living room, waving at you, Emily, Yay. across uh, way across the bay now. Across the bay from us. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're really excited for this uh, first official full stream here with Abzu. We did a little bit of a run through over on Twitch. Uh, feels like, you know, uh, forever ago. A million but, uh, years ago. Yeah. Uh, a long time ago. Um, <laughs> for those of you that are uh, tuning in right now, just very quickly, uh, we wanted to uh, give um, just an incredible amount of love and support to everybody out there who's currently yes. affected by um, the nearly 400 fires that we have currently in California. Um, obviously, all around the state, our hearts uh, go out to all of you. We hope you're staying safe and uh, your friends and family as well. But also, uh, in particular, we wanted to really um, express our our deep uh, our deep concern and uh, and hope that everyone is staying safe in our in our local area, uh, from Santa Cruz to uh, Salinas, Big Sur, uh, and Carmel Carmel Valley area. Everybody. Uh, out there hope you're hope you're doing okay uh currently we've got you know some ash falling from the sky and the yeah. and the the smoke here uh looking out the window from from here so hopefully uh you're all okay and doing all right uh and uh, hopefully these next few hours here on abzu are going to be a little bit of an escape for you folks out there who are able to uh to tune in so any yes. case just wanted to put that out there to yeah. everybody uh yeah it's pandemic it's, yeah, it's difficult already <laughs> um, and the fires out there that started. I know um, I usually yeah. save this till the, to the end of the streams, but just remember, please, please, please to be kind to yourselves and to be kind yes. to each other, especially right now. And um, we love you all. So uh, yeah. we hope that this can be a little bit of, of an escape for you right now in these really challenging times. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you uh, to everybody who has been supporting the aquarium in this time that we've been closed. Uh, it's our distinct pleasure to bring you some uh, some alternative content, some counter programming to what's going on out there in the world. So hopefully that's what this uh, this Abzu game is going to end up being uh, for all of you folks out there. Um, but with that, Emily, maybe let's uh, should we jump into to a new game? Completely? Do we want to do a new game? Start all over. Should we start, start all from over the very everybody? beginning? Yeah, we might we might start all over directly from the beginning since yeah, we, this is <laughs> since we only got first. like a hundred yards in the first it's true. time and it's a true. half an hour before. So yeah, yeah, might as well awesome. just hop into a new game. Yeah. Hop in. I, so, uh, which is also going to be good wondering... because I need to remember how to do all the controls. It's been two weeks. So, yeah. <laughs> um, for those of you out there who are wondering, uh, it is Emily that is currently playing, and I'm just watching on the Twitch stream. So I'm going to be. <laughs> Uh, a bit of a many thing. seconds behind yeah. so uh yeah. as emily gets more and more um frustrated with me uh <laughs> pointing <laughs> telling her where to go we're just gonna have a little bit of a of fun time here uh but thank you so much to everybody who is tuning in right now over on youtube and here on twitch uh this hello, is really hello, awesome everyone. thanks everybody so much for being there um oh yes one thing very quickly i do see sarah in the chat mod sarah and um and uh and everybody out there thanks to our mods as always but uh yes um yeah, please save spoilers and backseat yeah. backseating um we want to discover a little bit of this as we go together so uh please no spoilers for us oh but i love this intro emily i know diving down into the down deep into every the deep time. sea with all the jellies and the, the school of sardines and everything it's such a neat it's such a beautiful game i it don't is. think i don't think we're ever gonna get over that and just just that absolute attention to detail that's already so apparent in what in what uh, the developers have been able to create here. So really appreciate diving down into that deep ocean. Of course, here we're arriving at the at the center of the of the. Oh, OK. And we're back. You're floating. <laughs> yeah, I'm floating. <laughs> <laughs> that you're only on about a five second delay from me, Pat. So it hopefully shouldn't be too, too bad. I've been. I, okay. With the three screens that I have up right now, watching everything, <laughs> watching the oh, the uh, Twitch and Emily, the YouTube stream and stuff. Yeah. Is there game audio? 
currently looks like uh, some folks over on youtube are saying that there's no game on it helps if i turn it up there we go how about that I now like you it. can actually hear it. Uh, it. It helps when I turn the knob on the soundboard for the game sound. I had it turned down before uh, hey. while we were setting things up. And uh, again, every and if you're new, back on. <laughs> if you're new to gaming here with the Monterey Bay Aquarium, gamers. <laughs> uh, it is games done poorly and not very quickly. So uh, we are going to. Uh, we're going to be swimming around. We're going to be taking a lot of detours. We are not going to be playing through this game <laughs> as Emily dives into the cerulean seas of our uh, inadequacy, as it were, um, to be showing you this game. But we're just hopefully going to nerd out about the about the ocean environment together, and that'll be enough. And that was a pun already. I don't know if we have our pun counter ready to go there, Emily. But oh, I do. Hold on. Okay. Got to. Get that up going here. There pun we count. go. Pun count one. One. Pun count. Absolutely. Let's do this. All right. So, uh, yeah, um, we're currently diving in here to this uh, very clearly tropical environment. There you can see with those big cumulonimbus clouds back there and the sunbeams dancing on the white sand there. The white sand, we should point out, probably a whole bunch of parrotfish poop. I yes. don't know if we've seen too many parrot fishes in the game yet, but uh, we've already got our first little bit of, uh, of um, well, maybe an Easter egg for you folks out there. If you're not familiar with uh, white sand beaches, that is uh, largely due to broken down coral and largely due to the effects of parrot fish crunching on coral, digesting the coral polyps, and then uh, uh, pooping out their, um, they're calcium carbonate exoskeletons. And so you end up getting this beautiful white sandy beach right there. So already Abzu drops you into uh, some parrot fish uh, poo. Um, so already Abzu drops you into the game with some parrot fish poo. Sorry, I just had to parrot fish myself there very quickly there, uh, <laughs> there Emily, for pun number two. But uh, there we go. <laughs> awesome. There we go. Um, very Alrighty. good. So uh, one fact that I pointed out earlier uh, when we first saw Abzu here is that one of my favorite little details that we already have right here is the light dancing around on the seafloor there. And that's just something pretty interesting to think about because the light dancing on the seafloor there, those, those beams, that's from the ocean above creating a billion different individual lenses concentrating the light just like you might a magnifying lens, uh, uh, a magnifying glass. And so you end up having incredibly concentrated bright white light here and so um, as an underwater photographer this phenomenon is pretty interesting because a lot of fishes and other animals like octopuses have evolved to be able to handle bright flashes of light just like those ripples there that emily is doing such a good job of showing there on the seafloor and so um, there's been research into whether or not you know strobes and flashes from underwater photographers affect the eyesight of the fish that you're taking a photo of and uh this phenomenon that you're seeing right here is the reason why it does not for many organisms uh it doesn't harm the eyes it can certainly startle the animal um, but doesn't harm them long term and that's because of that highly concentrated light they're dancing across the bottom and that's due to the refraction of the light through the water basically the little wavelets forming a billion magnifying glasses it's already just some physics we're getting some physics and some poop in the first couple of minutes here of the stream there, Emily. <laughs> it wouldn't be a stream. Well, look at you go. You got your flips figured yeah. out now. <laughs> it's the most important part of the game for me is the flips. Whee! You're doing an ocean sunfish impression at this point, right, Emily? Yes, <laughs> really. I'm just channeling my inner Mola Mola. All, all times. I'm, I'm trying oh, to channel yeah. my inner Mola and Mola. And ja Jasper over on YouTube is mentioning, yes, a mollusk remains. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we talked about how Animal Crossing, the first organism you see, is a mollusk here uh, certainly lots of shells that are chopped up here broken here on the uh on the seafloor absolutely even some little uh, echinoderm buddies absolutely who's that absolutely look at our little sea star friends we oh we got a crown of thorns sea star of thorns. emily don't yeah, touch it okay. i'm trying not to oh god <laughs> oh god uh, no, Emily, go over to the other sea star. Sorry, that's just a, a, a call back to the previous. <laughs> um, but so yeah, so on the sea floor here, I don't know. Emily, I don't know. Do I think introduce? I've gotten better at this whole swimming thing since, even though I haven't played it in two weeks. 
the muscle, the, uh, That's the muscle memory. Speak, yeah, speaking the of mollusks, muscle the muscle memory. memory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but so, uh, Emily, I don't know, maybe do you want to introduce a few uh, just generally who we're looking at here, our echinoderm yeah, friends? Yeah. So uh, I mean, as a Patrick, I feel like I could just point out could, uh, all my brothers all and sisters. Of, all of but. your relatives right here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we have a whole bunch of echinoderms right now. So echinoderm literally translates to spiny skin. And for uh, some critters, it's a little bit more apparent why they got that name than others, like that uh, crown of thorns uh, sea star that we were looking at just a moment ago before I decided to swim up into the water column. Um, there we go. Heading back down now. Uh, <laughs> I jinxed myself. I was so proud for uh, for swimming so well before, and then I you, I decided to to try and talk and swim at the same time, and it was it was a disaster, Pat. But uh, hubris <laughs> on the live stream already, Emily. What what were you thinking? What was I thinking? That the pro gamer moves <laughs> got to my head there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these include animals like sea stars obviously but also things that you might not necessarily think are echinoderms like sea cucumbers uh sand dollars sea urchins that's another one that really kind of hits the nail on the head uh in, in terms of spiny skin uh i love but, i i'm sorry i just love their little shuffle i know <laughs> their like, little wiggles are so good it's super adorable um yeah it's <laughs> it's <laughs> just so cute to see them kind of like wiggle around i always love what the game designers have to do to try to make what's mostly an immovable uh or an unmoving animal move about but uh, yeah, they're like no yeah, this is an animal it's alive we promise <laughs> look at it go <laughs> look at it go uh that is okay so just so you folks know that is not normally what a sea star would be doing uh in terms of speed um and yeah by the way people pointing out that um that uh your character is just hovering around in the surge I think this is a really, really cool thing, a bit of physics that they're pointing out here as well. Notice how she's going in a circle, everybody. Yeah. Um, that's what uh, what's really cool about that is if you're if you're a diver and there's a lot of waves around, uh, the nearer you are to the wave, you're going to be moving up and down. And then as you get deeper into the water, the up and down translates much more to left and right as you move around. So I wonder, I, I don't know if you go up near the surface. I'm not asking you to go up to the surface but I, um, I wonder if you know if they got super detailed and up near the surface you're going more up and down with the wave as it goes but down deeper you end up you end up just moving side to side that's what we refer to as surge so it's not the same as a current um that pushes you from one part of the ocean to the next that is due to the waves going by and um the how close you are to the bottom or how how shallow the water is and how much the wave energy drags along the bottom, uh, the bathymetry, as it were, uh, is what influences the wave height. So it appears right now in the water column where you are, it's pretty much a flat day there, Emily. Yeah. So uh, the surge is happening on, on a different scale. But uh, um, that is something that Monterey divers know very, very well. I know going other places in the world where it's flat a lot of the time when you're out diving, a lot of people are are very uh, interested when they're diving out here that they are just getting thrown around underwater, like 10 feet forward, 10 feet back. Um, uh, yeah, it's just fascinating. So uh, maybe back to the echinoderms, just super quick. Uh, when you're seeing them walking around like that, that is what they would look like on a time lapse, maybe. Yeah. Uh, certainly not uh, in real time there. And then the one with the long arms uh, or the many arms in this particular game appears to be a um, crown of thorns sea star which is uh, famous for eating uh, corals and being pretty uh, being an invasive species in certain areas uh, and so might see that referred to as a pest in many zones and then uh, emily let's just pick one of these to be a, a local star none of them are super local <laughs> but which one do we claim do we want the one that looks sort of like the ochre star or the one that looks like the bat star we'll just call it our local species what do we think yeah, the we blue ones call, i feel like the ochre stars make more sense okay yeah, yeah the ochre stars are are ours there so we're just going to call oh my goodness emily you've got so many sea stars in front of you i'm going to call that a I disaster like a disa sea... disaster yeah. ready to happen <laughs> Pizaster Ocracious is the scientific name there of the Ocracious star. Ocracious so star. if you yeah. need that pun explained, there it is. Oh, uh, fascinating. Look at them all hanging out, trying to give you a sea star high five. I know. Oh, my gosh. Which, it, you, of course, you, works out yeah. from their pentaradial symmetry, the five-sided radial symmetry that is common 
in all echinoderms. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm the one who feels like a star right now. Look at all yeah, these Yeah, look fans. at you go. Well, you know what they say, you know, aim for the moon jelly, you'll land amongst the sea stars. That's our general advice if you want a, a career in marine science. Um, I don't know, you know. <laughs> this is this is really fascinating that they're following you around like that. Uh, people are asking what this game is about, Emily. I'm pretty sure that uh, this game, the way that we're going to play it, is not going to be about what the game developers meant it to be. Uh, about the game for us is about nerding out over all the details. Yeah, the game for us science. is a natural history simulator. Yeah, it's a natural history <laughs> simulator. Simulator, yeah. Um, but there is uh, <laughs> is Abzu. Um, we're we're here to help recover the health we of the our, ocean. Yeah, we have our little shark animal guide that is going to. Uh, show us how to restore the ocean right. yeah restore all of these ecosystems here um, <laughs> without getting too deep into it dragoonies is saying over on twitch that i've just been writing down puns for the last two weeks i'm just reading them all out now and i will not allow <laughs> that kind of slander to happen this is all off the dome buddy we're here we're crushing um, just like a parrotfish <laughs> crushes up coral and poops out the white sand on this game that's what we're doing we're crushing those facts and spreading them out like a fine, delightful vacation mist on your brains. And that's what I'm choosing to relate this dream that to. Was, that was a, uh, a, that was a detailed a, and upsetting description. That was a mental there, image I, okay, for okay. the ages. <laughs> but maybe we can move <laughs> along from <laughs> the sea stars. are like, <laughs> Emily, come with us. Run away from Patrick. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Um. Yeah, so we've got a little bit of algae right here out in our area. Bat stars, you know, th this algae in front of us uh, wouldn't be quite yeah. green in our area. This probably would be more like crustose coralline if this is some seagrass maybe um, or uh, general diatoms or, or something growing on the seafloor. The bat stars would love to feed off of that there yeah. as well. Absolutely. Um, I did see a question over in chat. Um, from your boy Splendens asking, when did sea stars appear in the fossil record? Um, that's a Oof. great question. Uh, sea stars specifically, I'm Man, not quite sure, but ago. I believe it was around the Ordovician, which would have been like 480 million years ago or so. So, mm. uh, yeah, I'm going to go about four, 480 million years ago for, uh, for sea stars, maybe a little bit younger. Um, I think echinoderms in general are around the 500 million years. So sea stars specifically, maybe not in this exact uh, form that we're looking at them in right now, uh, but very close, very similar to what we're looking at. Um, really, echinoderms haven't changed in body plan too, too much over the millions and millions of years that they have been around on our planet. Um, you know, when we talk about echinoderms, there are some echinoderms that we can find even further back in the fossil record, like crinoids. Um, so that, I mean, those ones have been around for even longer, m more than 500 million years. So, um, yeah. and those ones look identical pretty much to what they looked like 500 million years ago. So um, and my guess is probably for sea stars about 400 We'll say 450 million years ago for them. Sure. Yeah. sure. You know what? And if anyone if anyone feels like calling that out, um, unless they're a <laughs> shark or a jellyfish, we really don't we really don't care to fudge those details. You know, like it might it might it might <laughs> it might be really important to uh, to a feather star or to uh, or to um, uh, a brittle star to like no 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 we came first like we were there first but like, you know, we're, like everybody can just maybe calm that's down. what they're doing right now is they're all fighting to say no it's, i was, no, it was me it was me, me. um but uh <laughs> sorry i'm like i think you need to move your controller i did yeah we were hanging out in one spot for a little bit too long so the game was that just is like such a classic oh boy. modern day aquarium gaming moment of just the controller going to sleep <laughs> Um, uh, let me just answer a few questions over here. We're getting on uh, on YouTube. Uh, don't bigger sea stars eat smaller ones? Yes. Uh, yeah, so that yeah. can happen, certainly. Uh, in particular, if this was locally, the um, large crown of thorns uh, sea stars you see in there, the, the similar type would be the, well, actually kind of locally extinct now since the sea star wasting disease, but the um, sunflower sea stars would absolutely gobble up brittle stars and other smaller sea stars that they happen to have uh, around there. 
Oh, someone's mentioning it's a sea star orgy. Uh, not to worry, uh, sea stars don't reproduce um, reproduce in quite the way where they're bumping into each other like this. They are broadcast spawners, so they just spray and pray up into the water column and hope that uh, their gametes meet up. And actually, it happens kind of coordinated all at once around the springtime where uh, all of the organisms will start uh, will start spawning at the same time with water temperature and with what the moon is uh, is doing. And um, so I think we can all count our blessings that uh, uh, humans and dogs and cats and other organisms that we have in our <laughs> everyday lives aren't broadcast spawners unless you're just walking around and on the wind you just see puppies and kitty and kittens and like maybe that's newborn babies that going by like oh it's happening like when jo- it's raining cats and dogs it's whoa yeah exactly you oh, no, you're standing at the bus stop you look up just like oh looks like we need to send the johnsons a congratulatory card <laughs> so, yeah so in any case um yeah oh and i mean maybe we should mention that uh locally sea stars had a pretty big um had a pretty big event back in 2013 of sea star wasting yeah, uh, caused yeah. by a pathogen that uh, made sunflower sea stars and uh, go pretty much extinct here locally uh, and other sea stars struggled there we weren't exactly we're still not exactly sure what caused that but it was uh happened during a marine heat wave that we had here uh along the coast so you may have heard about that um and some of the stars are recovering in terms of you know the uh, ochre stars, jewel stars are kind of around, but have not seen a sunflower sea star in many years now. So hopefully they'll return along our coast sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, over there on Twitch, Kalen, thank you so much. We're great. We're, we're very happy to be back on here. Um, Absolutely. Should should we? I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to put bad news at the beginning of the stream. It's not bad news, but um, it's just different news. So next, uh, well, okay, first of all, Friday, we are going to be playing Animal Crossing. Yes. Um, We are going to have some amazing guests, some friends of ours over at Black AF and STEM on to play Animal Crossing with us, talking about um, the the lack of reptiles and and other herps and and birds in, in game in Animal Crossing. Um, but then next week, Patrick's actually going to be gone. Uh, yes. so instead you're stuck with me and, um, our fellow teammate, Rachel is going to hop on and Rachel is going to play. We think we're going to try and play some Octodad next week. Oh, Maybe man, talk that's about gonna be, cephalopods. That's going to be so much fun. I'm, I'm so, very excited. So bummed I'm missing that. I can't wait to watch that. <laughs> it, it just took, it took you to go away. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like it's, it's important for, uh, <laughs> For you all to experience Octodad. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fiore, when you ask who can do the best underwater handstand, do you mean me versus Patrick or do you mean of the animals? <laughs> Because there, it's two very different answers that we will have for you. Yeah, because right now the sea stars are doing a many thousand fold yeah, they are, uh, handstand. They as are were winning there. hands down, literally. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because they've got all their two feet walking around there on the seafloor. Um, yeah. So uh, definitely a stacked bit of content there next week. Yeah, I, I'll be out, um, but looking forward to returning back and seeing uh, all y'all and def- Oh, we got Trooper. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure you can hear her. She's getting a little woofy. Yeah, see right the, the the wiggles. Um, oh, yeah. someone was asking just super quick over on on uh, YouTube if sea stars can re um, can split into multiple different parts. Yeah, depending on what kind of sea star you are, like a crown of thorns. If you're broken up, you can grow back multiple sea stars from an individual. Um, but if you look up Linkia, is a genus of sea star, and they actually reproduce largely by dropping arms that then regrow into uh, other sea stars. So. Um, that is one way that they can reproduce. So there's some sexual and asexual reproduction going on there. Yeah, that's a good yeah. question. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Emily, that sounds awesome. I'm really excited for for y'all next week to do some Octo Dad, and, yeah. um, and I'm excited yeah, so, for you to have some time off, Pat. So it yeah. it all works out in the end. Exactly. Yeah. It'd be great. Um. Well, so maybe we should move on from this. Yeah, I'm just this saying is, that it's taken us even longer to go this is even shorter. Emily. We're we're getting worse <laughs> at this, or better at this. It depends. Okay, wait. So hold on. So here we got a little bit of giant kelp that's starting to grow. A little bit. Just so little that's kind of cool. This is actually something interesting to point out. Is notice how the giant kelp is not holding on to any uh, hard rock there. Um, that would seem to be like it's not an accurate uh, thing because normally giant kelp needs a hard substrate to hold on to. But I learned recently that off of Southern California back in the day, 
um, there were actually entire fields of kelp that had been discovered that were growing pretty much out of the sand, out of some like slightly rougher cobble, but not off of the big rocks that they're, that they're used to growing off of. So this right here, little detail I learned recently that um, there have been in certain areas, giant kelp forests that will pop up what in what would look like just an open field uh, without rocks on them. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks Abzu for pointing yeah. that out. Yeah. And Over on the right there, pork, Emily. Pork, pork. Is, Sorry, yeah. Troopers oh, being very pork, pork. porky. She, she has been so good for like the last month of stream. She was completely silent during all the games done quick stream. So I feel like she's she'd she's earned a few borks, especially because we're in the new place, and so she's like. Yeah. being extra extra pro, pro tech right now exactly um. yeah and um, we should point out that emily is currently streaming from the new uh professional streaming studio of <laughs> emily's spare spare room that. which is uh, very exciting yeah, by professional you mean filled with boxes then, correct yes yeah, yeah. um yeah. Overall, oh, and just by the way, just if we're talking about um, like epic gamer moments, uh, we should just point out that both Emily and I were there to watch Tim the Tapman finally get the crown on Fall Guys. That really got us stoked exciting. for his streaming today. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, dubs in the chat. Congrats, Tim. That was really hilarious to watch from, uh, <laughs> from one professional in a different field to another on Twitch. That was really, really, really funny. Six hours. Uh, wow. What a, yeah. <laughs> Six hours in a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. Um, Emily, on your right there, there's a rock. Can we take a look at that rock real quick? Yeah, of course. I'm wondering if it's blue because it's blue or because we've got some blue cobalt sponge on it. Ooh. Hmm. I think that's just the shading. I think that's just the shading on the rock. But let's imagine that that's blue cobalt sponge, uh, <laughs> Emily, because in our local area, we do have a sponge that is basically that exact same color. Uh, and there are a few different species of nudibranch that might feed on that as well. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Abzu for showing off some blue cobalt sponge right out here in the in the opening. <laughs> Sponges, animals, too. That's a fact that not a lot of people know. Yeah. Uh, one of the very first organisms on our planet, sponges. Yeah. Um, so over on the side there, uh, oh, we've got some butterfly fish there behind you. I love the schools of fish that are showing out. Yeah, I know this is something that you, you talked about kind of the last time we streamed, Pat, but you were mentioning how it makes total sense that... Uh, sorry, I'm having a moment with the grouper right here. Oh, hey, grouper uh, friends. <laughs> You're becoming a groupie, like we yeah. mentioned before. Oh, yeah. I guess we're going into the cave. Well, really quick back there, uh, you noticed how there, were, there weren't any Woo! fish like out in the open water, but um, they were all kind of congregated where those rocks oh, were down look on the at bottom the kelp of the sea. Still the, the best transition right there, right into the kelp forest. Absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, we should point out that this is, I'm going to say, is a type of goliath grouper, a very, very large grouper. So not a giant sea bass we don't have uh uh or giant sea bass are not groupers we mentioned that previously just want to get that out in a shorter uh, way giant sea bass are polyprion polyprionids excuse me which is a wreck fish um but groupers i believe are going to be uh or true sea basses are going to be ceranids um and actually i i don't know if uh our goliath grouper or giant grouper that we saw just there is uh is exactly a strand i'll look it up here real quick but yeah. in any case not quite a giant sea bass but emily we've just been dropped off into an absolutely <sighs> absolutely incredible absolutely, room because yeah. boy do we recognize this place right yeah ab ab absolutely we recognize this also <laughs> hey team water quality we hope that you're taking care of yourselves too and and staying safe over at, at the aquarium right now i know that lots of challenges over there at the moment with all the smoke in the air and stuff so Shout out Team Water Quality. We love you. Yes. Yeah, yes. I love you, Team Water Quality. And yeah, I just looked it up. Groupers are ceranids. So um, so not wreck fishes. Um, but Team Water Quality knows this environment very, very, very well because well. this looks yeah. pretty much just like our giant kelp forest exhibit that we have at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Our exhibit was the first exhibit in the world to have a living, growing kelp forest inside of it. We opened that in 1984, yeah. where we thought like a kelp, where we had uh, the opening open to the sun, the natural seawater coming in from the Monterey Bay, the wave motion that allows the kelp to grow. In the wild, giant kelp can grow almost two feet in a day in prime conditions in our area, about a foot a day. 
and in the kelp forest at the aquarium about four inches a day. It's the second fastest growing photosynthetic organism in the world after bamboo, which can grow about three feet in a day. But giant kelp can grow from about 70 feet deep in our area, but be over 200 feet long covering the sea surface with that canopy that Emily, you were swimming through earlier. Um, I have a quick request, Emily. Can yeah. you swim through the arch? Swim was, through the arch, yeah. There was, oh, look at that canopy. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Um, but yeah, this is, I mean, this is why I go diving, uh, is to be in a giant kelp forest. Just, oh my goodness, look at that. It's so cool. Look at the sheep head. Emily, you want to talk about our sheephead friends, our schools of sheephead there? Yeah, I mean, the ones that I'm swimming through right now with that kind of orange stripe in the middle of their black bodies, those bright white chins, those would be the males of the sheepheads are kind of wrasse. Um, and you you typically, this this might be our, our one gripe with the, the game, you typically wouldn't see big schools of, of males like this all in the same area. Um, they tend to be pretty territorial, kind of off on their own. Um, and uh, all of these male sheep heads that we see right now uh, would have used to look a little different, like, well, let's see if I can swim over to them. There we go. Uh, these orange fish with the white chins, uh, you can kind of see the resemblance there. Uh, those would have been, those are the female sheep heads. So seeing them together all in one place, not too. Um, uncommon but uh those female sheep heads so sheep heads all start off as females and then uh transition to become males um and it happens for a couple of different reasons um if the large male sheep head in area passes away the next largest uh biggest oldest female sheep head will transition and become a male sheep head uh, but also as they just generally get older usually around seven or eight years of age, um, some females will start that transition to become a male as well. So um, yeah. what, what, we, we, what we like to say is these dudes used to be a lady. Yeah, yeah exactly. So they're, they're the most empathetic of male yes. vertebrates uh, out there to, uh, <laughs> to, to what goes on out there. They, um, they certainly are helping to smash the patriarchy. But the... Um, yeah, we've got comments currently about uh, yeah them swimming in schools like that. You would not normally see so many male sheephead all swimming together uh, like that. Normally you would have a larger group of females, which are the pink ones that also have the white chin that are swimming near the males. But you really would only have a handful of males in a given area. Um, they kind of end up spreading out. Oh, you swam through the arch, Emily. Yes. <laughs> And the uh, and so those those sheephead males they kind of are the limiting uh, characteristic of that reproductive population there. So usually you only have like maybe one or two males, and then many many females around uh, in one particular area. Uh, so a little bit of creative license, but we love sheephead. They're a type of wrasse, so related to um, related to the parrotfish that pooped outside this this zone for the white uh, the white sand. Uh, we've also got some folks that are pointing out your amazing fin technique there, uh, Emily. And uh, yeah, we should point out that you are currently an epic, epic free diver. Yeah. And so those would be long blade, maybe carbon fiber fins that free divers use to dive. For a scuba diver, you're moving so much bulk through the water with your weight belt and your tank and everything that you need kind of fatter fins to really uh, push you through the water. But when you're free diving, you want to glide. And so, um, very good job there uh, on your end there, Emily, with your with your blade <laughs> fins to swim around. You're also holding your breath surprisingly well so far. So. Yeah, I think that this little helmet that I'm wearing here is uh, the mechanism by which I am breathing in game. Um, but there's no tank or anything on our back. So not quite sure exactly game mechanically how that is working. You just got gills. Yeah. You just got some gills. You're fed with fed with the puns. So, you know, we everybody needs a little kelp <laughs> from their fronds. So there you go. A little breath of fresh kelp air right there in the one of the nematocysts of the kelp. So uh, very quickly, you'll notice that the kelp is going up to the sea surface. And uh, that is due to the fact that giant kelp, along with other large canopy forming kelps have uh, air pockets in them usually that bring them up to the surface. Look at you under the canopy. That's so cool. That is literally, I could sit 
and look at that in the wild forever. So maybe we'll just stay here, Emily. Um, <laughs> people are wondering how long we're going to stream. We're going to try to cut this off in about an hour and 15 minutes, but I already can't believe that it's been like 40 it's been something 45 minutes. minutes yeah. <laughs> we've been talking, seeing this already. Um, but uh, yeah, so just very quick. Oh, go see the seahorse, please. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a seahorse. Um, but so, okay, just very quickly. So the kelp is buoyed up to the surface with little air bladders known as pneumaticists, P-N-E-U, pneumaticist, um, not nematicist, N-E-M-A-T-O-C-Y-S-T, uh, because a nematicist is the stinging uh, harpoon of a jellyfish, a pneumaticist is uh, the little buoy that brings the kelp up to the surface. And that is filmed, filled with oxygen from photosynthesis. From car it's filled with carbon dioxide from cell respiration and also a little bit of carbon monoxide from incomplete cell uh, respiration, incomplete sugar combustion that happens in low oxygen environments. And that's what buoys the kelp up to the surface. This is the coolest game in the world, Emily. Oh my goodness, look how pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, look the cow happy like pneumonia, like new pneumonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Can you tell us about the seahorse? Look at our seahorse friend. Look at it, little buddy. So, <laughs> I mean, it's in the it's in the kelp here. So we're, we're going to guess that this is supposed to be a Pacific seahorse. Yes. Um, the yes. largest species of seahorse in the world there. Um, but we got our little Pacific seahorses um, hanging out here with their prehensile tails that they can use to grab onto things, including, a, you know, like this type of, of kelp to hold on to so that they don't drift away in this surge that we're hanging out in right now. But um, these are just some of the coolest fish in the world and, and they are fish. Um, they have fins, they have scales, although their scales have been modified into these plates like armor all over their body. Um, and they have those, what look like little ears right behind their eye are actually their, their fins or pectoral fins uh, right over there that uh, it I think it's the pectoral fins that get me every time because they do look like little wiggly ears. They on, do, on yeah. Seahorses. <laughs> just the way that seahorses are set up is just so bizarre because they're you know vertical, but yeah, they're they're a fish. The body plan that um, that fish have, you can find it there all on the seahorse. But uh, um, yeah, so you can see how it's kind of bobbing its head back and forth. Uh, seahorses yeah. are in the group of um, fish is known as signaphids, which means fused jaw. And uh, basically they, the way that they feed is when they cock their head forward very quickly, it creates negative pressure that slurps in uh, food, like a kind of a, a reversed, um, a reversed uh, water gun, uh, just slurping things uh, into their mouth. And so um, they often just try to hide there in the kelp. And then when a little shrimp comes up or something, they'll quickly they'll swim up to it with their head down and then they'll fling their face forward which then sucks in the food there really incredible incredible stuff yeah and um some folks over on youtube are pointing out that abzu is really not meant to be you know a, li a literal uh game if it is a littoral game certainly but not a literal game meant to make <laughs> you feel like you're in the ocean i can just give a huge huge shout out to the to the game devs because as an avid diver i mean this is what it feels like to be in a kelp forest on a good day and it's my favorite place in the whole world look at this oh it's so cool yeah um maybe we could talk a little bit just quickly maybe uh for you folks that they might be interested um so giant kelp you know we might call it a plant uh, it's obviously not a plant like a tree it's an alga it's a brown alga so a little bit you know, if you were taking this photo and sending it to me, I would say that your white balance is a little bit off. Those uh, blades should be a little bit uh, more yellowy, golden brown, but uh, um, it is a photosynthetic organism. And we'll just point out, Emily, uh, some of the structures. So what you're looking at behind you, those are not leaves, correct? Correct. So these would be considered blades, blades of a kelp. Um, that is not a stem. It is a stipe. Um, that is uh, attached to all those blades there, or I should say the blades are all attached to that stipe. Um, and it doesn't have roots, instead it has a holdfast that it is using to anchor itself to the seafloor. So kind of different terminology uh, that, uh, that we use when we talk about giant kelp and other big algae like this. Um, so we have blades, stipes, 
and hold fasts. Um, hold fasts, of course, working a, a whole lot differently than like the way a root system would for a terrestrial plant here on land, where it's using those roots to both anchor itself and to gather nutrients. Instead, uh, kelp gets its nutrients from the water surrounding it. Um, those blades um, have just this really, really neat texture all over them uh, that increases the surface area. And uh, surface area of those blades works like a little sponge to soak up all of the nutrients in the water around it, which is why this movement that we are hanging out in right now is so critical because if the kelp was just standing still, the water was just standing still, those blades would just soak up everything around it and then there wouldn't be any new nutrients to help this kelp grow. And uh, that's one of the reasons why when you watch the kelp forest cam, or if you've ever been to the kelp forest at the aquarium before, and you stand there in front of this, you know, 28 foot tall giant window looking up at the kelp and you watch it swaying back and forth and then you start swaying back and forth. That motion is there. Um, that was the key to getting the kelp forest to grow. Um, that's the reason why we were the first aquarium in the world to be able to grow giant kelp is because we figured out that it needed that motion in order to get the nutrients in the water around it. So um, this motion that we're seeing right now is exactly what the kelp would be doing out there in the actual ocean, swaying back and forth and just slurping all of that good nutrient-rich cold water up around it. Absolutely. And um, absolutely, absolutely, every time we say yeah. that. And yeah, uh, okay, so <laughs> I changed the title on YouTube uh, for you folks that are currently tuning in and wondering when we're going to start playing the game. Um, so the title is now Monterey Bay Aquarium Plays Abzu very, very slowly. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we're we're pretty much uh, we're pretty much going to be using this game as a way to talk about marine biology, marine science, things that happen at the aquarium. We'll eventually make our way uh, through the game, not to worry. But we're pretty much going to take it room by room, kind of mention everything, answer people's questions as it goes. So. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Uh, the definitely plan is appreciate... definitely to to go through the game like this, just yeah, just very exactly. very slowly. We um, had had a taste of the entire game um, when we were on Games Done Quick a few weeks ago for Ocean Week, and yeah. um, there were so many things that we wish that we could have talked more about. Yeah. Um, so now this is our chance. We definitely we, we got yeah. the green light. So <laughs> and uh, and for <laughs> and for you and for you folks out there who are tuning in as well. Uh, since the aquarium is closed, we haven't been able to uh, talk to uh, real people in person about uh, about kelp. Uh, so uh, you happen to be our current audience there. So <laughs> apologies for that, but uh, we will definitely be breaking records for the longest run through. Uh, Emily, I think if you can just stay stationary in this room, we've got probably another two or three at hours least, of content. Yeah, at least. <laughs> Ready to go. No, we, we can move. We can maybe move on just a little bit. Um, but uh, um, Pat, I don't know if you want to talk about though um, some of the other fishes in here. There was one that just swam past me over here. This little butterfly fish, and some of the other fishes in this yeah. kind of area that we're in right now that uh, we, we wouldn't really see in a, a kelp forest typically. That there are yeah some... no those butterfly fish if they are butterfly fish that we have in kelp forest they would be a scythe butterfly fish yeah. from down deep. Um, along uh the southern california coast um where and maybe even in mexico where there where there are some kelp forests off of baja um you might start seeing some of those butterfly fishes but right now emily is swimming through water uh in game that's probably around the like 65 to 70 degrees giant kelp stops growing above 70 degrees so we're gonna go like 60 something degree water right now yeah. and there can be some mixture of trop subtropical fishes off of southern california um, and around here, ooh, who do we have down there ahead of you? No. Who's that? Is that some coral? Oh, it's some... like some coral. All oh, right, so we I'm are definitely somewhere in Mexico. All right, we're gonna oh. interact. <gasps> Turtles. Who's oh, this? Who's buddies. this? What's going on? <gasps> Turtle friends. <sighs> Hold on, you just I gotta got, go. I you gotta go. Spawned find... more biodiversity into the kelp forest. I did. Forest? Yes, that's totally awesome, Emily. It's time to celebrate. Look at them go. I'm green with envy. Look at the sea turtles. Okay, oh we're not going to ride the sea turtles, right? But we are going to look I, at them. I think that I <gasps> might look at the be Garibaldi. able to try. Oh. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to catch up to it. 
So oh, we are definitely in a Southern California to uh, Northern Baja, California. Um, Look at her. She's so pretty. <sighs> yes. So, well, we definitely have sea turtles in our area. We have green sea turtles, olive ridley sea turtles off of um, California. Uh, and um, what we also have in the Monterey Bay recently that a lot of people have been seeing are leatherback sea turtles. Leatherback sea turtles don't look anything like this. They yeah. are more of a purpley, bluish black color, um, and they feed on jellies. Uh, but these are absolutely uh, amazing, amazing organisms that we sometimes get to see here in the bay. Emily, have you ever seen a turtle out there in the ocean? I've only I ever seen have. a leatherback once and then sometimes yeah. green sea turtles in Mexico, but not in the kelp forest out here, have you? Uh, well, not in the physical kelp forest. I've seen the leatherback sea turtles out here before. I've seen. I've been lucky enough to see two of them chowing down on jellies um, out on whale watching trips. And that's typically where you that's would cool. see them if you're out a couple miles offshore, kind of in the midwater there. Um, you can see them coming up to the surface and what they'll do is they'll kind of dive down and then swim straight up through a big smack of jellies and just feast and chow down. And in the back of their mouth, they have these spikes that point backwards. Um, the inside of a sea turtle's mouth it can be terrifying. It, it, it's gone around the internet a, a few times yes. in, in recent history, but in case you haven't seen it, it it's definitely worth a Google, but um, the inside of their mouth is, uh, is terrifying, particularly if you are a jelly, uh, simply because it is made to be almost like a strainer for jellies, because as these sea turtles are swimming through those big smacks of jellies out there in the ocean, you know, they're chowing down and swallowing those jellies, uh, but they're also swallowing seawater with it. And so in order to get that seawater out of their stomach, they basically vomit um but they <laughs> want the food to stay inside so they have those spikes in the back of their throat to make sure that the jellies don't come out but the seawater does um so it's definitely a a, a horrifyingly amazing adaptation that these uh, absolutely that these it's an iron have. maiden for jellies yeah. in their throat yeah <laughs> and apparently uh, emily there are more of these circles around that we wait should... in this area there are more i don't know maybe we should probably swim okay, around okay well that was the one that we did before um and you know i you know, I, I definitely don't want to say that I love that sea turtle because we only just met, but I definitely have a crush on oh, it. <laughs> hey, that was, make that, sure you I have would a buddy. Say that was expected. Yeah. Make sure you have a buddy. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh, um, those of you folks wondering over on uh, YouTube. Uh, yes, we are the ones that do the social Patrick, media on Patrick, Tumblr. We have more. Patrick, we have more friends. Who's more yeah, friends? <gasps> We have yes. trumpet fish, cornet fish, trumpet fish, trumpet fish. Oh my goodness. I've actually gotten to see some of those in oh, Indonesia. Those yes. So similar to cornet fish, trumpet fish are these elongated fishes that uh, are just absolutely stunning. The yellow uh, on that. Oh, and I was also being told that um, the yellow fish that swims by is a type of tang upon closer in in inspection ah. awesome also in here we've got some giant kelp fish which are the longer green ones there there's also a couple of bass around that i was seeing yeah it looked like there might have been a, a rock fish or maybe a kelp bass is what they were yeah going and we for. should point out oh yeah. there goes the garibaldi the bright orange fish emily you want to introduce us to the garibaldi or yeah. maybe i can talk about it if you want to swim around looking for more biodiversity uh yeah more biodiversity portals yeah, yeah. wait is that a shark rock on your right yeah you want me to go to the shark rock? Hold on. That's a shark with a bark. It look because it's kind of sitting oh, like a dog is, over there. Where is it? Is up here? Behind yeah, you to your there left. There it is. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the orange fish that's going by that looks like a goldfish. It is a damselfish, and it is the Garibaldi. It's the California State Marine Fish. Um. And we have a few Garibaldi in the kelp forest exhibit at the aquarium, but the Garibaldi is the only fish so far in this game that I've been bitten by. <gasps> you can interact with the shark friend. <gasps> oh. What's going on? I'm just going to sit and meditate. Oh, get out. Look at this. What? You can just meditate? 
And now it tells you the name of the fish in the bottom Get corner. Get out. This is the greatest game <gasps> ever. Got some squirrel fish. There's our Garibaldi. <gasps> Tell me what, what's happening, Emily. Five line snapper. <sighs> Male California sheephead. Oh, my God. What is this? Little teeth, too, when it opens its mouth. Oh Hi. God. I'm here Hello. to munch on some urchins and some lobster and some crabs. I have big jaws. I bite Patrick sometimes in the cat forest. It hurts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amazing. So, I mean, you can really see that lower jaw there. Uh, seahorse. Sorry, sorry yes. I switched. Yeah. No, awesome. Awesome. Oh, it's going to tell us what this. We were right, Patrick. It's a Goliath grouper. Goliath grouper nailed it. I mean, Solid. first of all, I, I mean, we say that we nailed it, but really the game developers nailed it because right. they, well, they and, got the design. Um, so. You know, Goliath groupers, you don't really see them around here because they're definitely terrified of Pebble Beach. That's a good biblical pun there, I want to say. <laughs> I'm Move just... to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to come up with another biblical fun there but it, it just wasn't coming to me there yeah uh -oh. just <laughs> let's just slingshot our way over to another another, another zone. oh my gosh that's all it's gonna go to now is it's just only goliath, stuff, groupers. only goliath groupers okay Kelpfish. yay look at that little bug oh cool so we do have uh an increase of giant kelp fish in our local area um likely due to uh, some of those marine heat waves, they typically used to be a Southern California fish, but uh, we've got them in the Monterey Bay. Quite a few of them as well. Um, yeah, absolutely great. Let's see, who's next? Is it going to be another Goliath I mean, and by grouper? the way, the kelp fish look exactly <laughs> like the kelp. Is it going to be a grouper? Yeah, it was another Goliath grouper. It is. All right. Female California sheephead. Again. There she is. And when they're younger, by the way, these uh, fish, they can be yellow um, or pink with bright white stripes as well. There's our trumpet fish. Look at you go. You look awesome. Let's see if we can get to the Garibaldi. I know. I was wondering where it was going to Who that? Five line snapper. Yeah, that's definitely down in Mexico, Southern California. Oh, this is such a cool view. I know. It, it just really wants just to focus to on that Goliath grouper there. That's <laughs> fine. There's another one. Another one and another one. This is cool. This is so cool. Man. Who's this? Okay. Oh, fish. yellow tang is, is what yellow tang. There yes. Go. Good to know. Yeah. So uh, Dory, famously a blue tang, so doing its best impression of just keeping on swimming. This is really cool. Not very yellow. No, again, we've established that the white balance is a little bit off on the in-game camera because that kelp <laughs> should be a little bit more, a little bit more brownish yellow. But yeah. Oh, this is cool. All right. Well, maybe we can move on yeah, from the yeah, from okay. the meditation. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you check out our YouTube channel, we've got some meditations. <laughs> if you feel like meditating with uh, with the ocean, we also came out recently with some Krill Waves Radio, with some Lo-Fi Hip Hop, with some Squid and our Jellies. So, if you're looking to meditate with the ocean, we got you covered over on our YouTube channel there. Oh man, great job meditating there, Emily. Thank you. And off we go. And there go your fins. So cool. Oh, down to the left, Emily. Down to the left. Down to the down, left. There's uh, another oh there's gosh. another biodiversity. To your right now. To the right now. To the right now. That's the one that I just oh if it's blue, I think I opened no. it. To the right, to the right. To the right. More more, more to, to your to the right. right. More to your right. Down? More to your right. Down. Yeah, so if you're look if you're on top of Shark Friends, straight ahead. Yeah. What's it gonna yeah, be? Yeah, yeah. What's Who it is it? Be? 
What's Who the is it? <gasps> Leopard sharks. Leopard sharks in the kelp forest. Get out. <gasps> what? Yes. Well, this is now officially a Monterey Bay Aquarium sea emulation because yeah. leopard sharks are are in our kelp forest exhibit and I hand feed them. I'll be hand feeding them tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. If you folks want to check that out <laughs> on our kelp forest cam. Leopard sharks are uh, really common in Southern California as well. Um, but uh, one of the amazing fishes that we have in our exhibit. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, it's I'm trying to swim after it. But I mean, Patrick, you can talk about how in real life this is kind yeah, of how it would be uh, that these sharks, even though they're they're small, they are such good swimmers and they can just dart away from you in a second. I know that it, when when I've gone diving in the kelp forest here in Monterey, I've seen one once. And it's one of the thing where like you spot it, it's already seen you. It knows that you're there. And the second that it sees you, it's like, nope. And it just, with one flick of its tail, will just swim right away. Oh yeah, no, the, the uh, leopard sharks really humbled me back when I thought that I was like a good swimmer. Yeah. Um, they're yeah. so incredibly efficient <laughs> that two tail beats and they're um, as far away as they need to be from you. I've seen two leopard sharks out here diving in the Monterey Bay, one off of Pebble Beach and one off of uh, Point Lobos and every time they just wanted nothing to do with me so um, I didn't take it personally but um, <laughs> such a cool thing yeah these those are some those are some corals some harder corals looks like the blue ones there at the base could be a porites type uh, we've also got some uh, longer fan corals that Emily just swam directly through thankfully they <laughs> they don't break in game no, totally sorry kidding. I'm sorry totally kidding is that a little sea urchin friend? Yeah, that was a little sea urchin friend. The uh, nice, the bane of all kelp forests out there. Yeah, the kelp forest there. reckoning. Yeah. Oh, there goes one of our kelp bass. It looked like oh, a little crab friends. Yeah, there's some crabs. There's some lobsters hiding underneath the rocks over there. Oh, this is so cool. This is very neat. I haven't also been able to quite tell if uh, some of these fish are doing that uh, spraying and praying move or if they are just <laughs> pooping in game. Um, either one. That happens all the time. All the time. Yeah. I can tell you from diving in the in the open sea exhibit, it's really cool when you're in there and then immediately you realize that you're being crop dusted by a lot of animals and uh, it changes your... <laughs> You're feeling a little bit, yeah. If you ever take a plankton sample, you'll notice that you're swimming through a lot of uh, a lot, a lot of the live history of other organisms, whether you meant to or not. Oh, this is where we find our little robot friend. <laughs> yeah, there's two robot friends in here that that we need to pick up. So, okay, let's do it. We'll we'll get one of them here and then keep on going and find the other one too, eventually. 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 So uh, we just did a talk yesterday. If you folks are interested on our VOD on Twitch and over on YouTube, we just did a talk with some autonomous underwater vehicle um, uh, or with Emery Nolasco, our amazing autonomous underwater vehicle engineer uh, over at Mbari at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. So if you want to learn more about the cool tech that you're seeing right there in front of you, Emery uh, had some amazing video of what it's like to be out at sea launching. Uh, that tech there so check that out it's on it's on youtube and uh on twitch vod um that was uh mysteries of the deep with emery and nolasco learning about auvs robots exploring the ocean so again all of these games they're just monterey bay simulators what are you friend this is super cool Hold on. what's this Hold what's on. it what i know what's i it? i turned what's and I, and now i can't turn back around there we go it, it's okay <laughs> You got this. Currently <laughs> swimming through some, through some eel grass, some zostera. Oh. Who's our ammonite? I don't know. Well, you have the ammonite now. So we have our mollusk. We have our ancient mollusk represented already. Huh. This is. Really well. Cool. Hopefully, I was supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine so. Or if anything, Robot Friend saw you do it and is going to tell him. <laughs> oh, no. Robot Friend, no. <laughs> robot Friend, don't be a nerd. One. All right. Have I gotten this one? No, I don't think I have. Hold on. Where are we going? What are we doing? <gasps> More biodiversity, friends. Oh, no, I have gotten that one. Okay. Oh, okay. Emily, I'm going to take a quick break to get a little bit more water here. Okay, I'll be yep. right back. 
I'm just gonna enjoy the uh, the music in the game and swimming. This is very nice. I guess I should uh, look at the chat. I haven't looked at the chat in many, many minutes. <laughs> All right, let's let's go to the chat. Sea Roomba. Yes, it is very much like a sea Roomba there. Um, yeah, we named the uh, AUV during the um, during the stream yesterday. One of our AUVs at Empire. Its unofficial nickname is now Mike Wazowski because it has a big eye on the front of it, a big camera on the front of it, just like this little sea Roomba friend that we have in the game now. <laughs> All right, let's go here. Um, I'm back. All right. I was just what reading happened? the uh, Oh, not much. Uh, we talked about Mike Wazowski, um, the AUV. Oh, Mike. <laughs> Mike Wazowski. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and uh, that was yeah, just such a fun fun talk, talking to Emery about, about that research there. It was. Um, oh, I think I'm going backwards. Okay. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. So, you're you're exiting with the robot friend. <laughs> <laughs> We're out. The game is like, no, you can't go. <laughs> you must move forward. Li yeah, literally, the game is just like, okay, Monterey Bay Aquarium. Like, let's let's make let's, some. Let's game pick up the space. All right. Yeah. All right. This is super cool. <gasps> you're swimming through the arch again. Yes. <laughs> I mean. Patrick, That's there the are thing. there are two more arches here for me to swim through. All right, ready? Oh, One. get out! That's the greatest thing. And then, wee two. There we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, Team Water Quality is pointing out that comb jelly is, on the other hand, do have complete guts, and so they do have butts, and thus they can poop. Absolutely, and I should absolutely, I should point out that. Um, uh, comb jellies also have two anal pores, uh, so they don't have just the one anus. They have two anal pores. Uh, and uh, another fun fact that goes alongside that is that certain types of comb jellies, like Nemeopsis comb jellies, can regenerate their entire body from just about 10% of uh of their body as long as they have those two anal pores still attached so uh, uh effectively if you are a nemeopsis comb jelly you're a living a living samuel l jackson quote from jurassic park uh if you get damaged and you want to recover just hold on to your butts <laughs> that is a long walk to one of my favorite jokes but now you know comb jellies have two butts <laughs> <laughs> or two anal pores, rather. Oh my goodness! So you got two two robot friends. I awesome. got two robot friends. I guess there's three robot friends. I don't know. <laughs> this is a blind playthrough <laughs> for the most part. We saw it done once very very quickly, but very uh, quickly. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> oh, who's this? Three friends. Three friends. And you've got a wall of a uh, Gorgonian there in the background. Three. That's super cool. Uh, Gorgonians are also uh, known as sea fans. Um, they're a type of coral. Oh, this is super cool. Are these going to be our cameras? Or look at that. <gasps> That's so cool. J okay, so just looking at the structure there, um, that, you know, the wall that we have here in front of us actually does look exactly like a Gorgonian yeah. or a, a type of uh, coral there. It would be capturing passing plankton there in that. <gasps> That's a super cool detail. Are we going to break through, Emily? We are. Patrick, I would also just like to point out that it's been an hour and we have finally gone through like the first checkpoint of the game. Perfect. Here. <laughs> All right. See you later, you boy Splendens. <laughs> see you. Gotta go. Um, oh, a uh, question. Annoying shark. side quest. How far derived are comb jellies from true jellies? I had no idea they were different. Oh, there's our shark friend. Um, so comb jellies are in a completely different phylum. Uh, comb jellies are tenophores, and uh, true jellies are in the phylum Cnidaria, which also include corals and anemones. So they're completely separate. And in fact, if you talk to the sponge people, 
the uh, comb jellies can be super <gasps> moray eel sighting. Comb jellies are a little bit unnerving because they appear to be basal on the tree of life. They basically went a completely separate direction for their uh, for their evolution than many other organisms did. And so we basically derive directly from uh, from sponges in terms of we have the same type of genetic information for regulating how our DNA replicates how uh, what what direction our head goes and our limbs go but comb jellies did something completely different so they kind of bifurcated at the base of the tree of life so um, comb jellies are very very different from regular jellies there uh, but um, Emily in Abzu when you swim into a crack and maybe you don't come back that's a moray <laughs> <laughs> Had to get it out there. Uh, well Patrick uh when I've been swimming in the sea and an eel hasn't bit my knee, that's been a moray too. That's, that's been a moray. Yeah. That's right. Uh, <laughs> look at these moray eels. These are some green morays. I imagine they could yeah. be panamic uh, green morays like you find off of Mexico. They could also be similar to the California morays, which are a little bit more brown uh, and yellow-y um, there. Um, yeah. Um, and you can tell that these are true eels as well, as opposed to, um, say, like a wolf eel in our kelp forest. Uh, those ones, even though they have eel in their name, they're more just like an eel-like fish. Um, eels are fish, but um, in order to be a true eel, you can't have uh, pectoral fins, and you have to have what's called a leptocephalus larva. Um, which is a, a stage in your life when you are very, very little, um, where you basically look like a little transparent worm friend. Um, they're, yeah, they're real they, cute. they used yeah. to be called glass. They used to be called glass eels. They were thought to be a separate species of the eel, but they actually turned out to be yeah. um, the the larvae. Yeah, the larvae of. Oh, we, yeah. sorry, Emily, in, on uh, YouTube, we've got a great comment. When the jaws open wide and there's another set inside, that's a moray. That's a moray. <laughs> yeah, so morays have raptorial jaws, um, very yeah. similar to the alien xenomorph, uh, where they have basically another set of jaws inside their jaws that are modified pharyngeal jaws, which yeah. a lot of fishes have. So, for yeah. example, the parrotfish yeah. we mentioned at the beginning that munch on the coral, they'll use their pharyngeal jaws to sift through uh, the coral to kind of grab uh, the bits that they want to that they want to digest, um, but morays their pharyngeal jaws are an extra set of jaws because they don't have um, the ability of swallowing uh, food whole, or they can't open up their mouth wide enough rather to engulf their food like the groupers do. Um, they basically use those pharyngeal jaws as a ratchet to uh, hold on to food and ratchet it back into their throat. There. Um, Oh, I love that uh, on uh, Twitch. Do you see that, Emily? Uh, wolf eel and moray eel next to each other. One of us tells the truth and one of us always lies. <laughs> uh, that's great. That's yeah, Because a wolf eel, not a true eel. No. No. Um, yeah, Raptor of War. Great job on, the, on that one. I've seen that one uh, previously. Yeah, I think that one was actually tweeted out by the... Um, by the fish physiology and morphology lab over at UC Santa Cruz back when they published their paper on that. I'm blanking on her name. She's a professor over at UC Santa Cruz who did that morphology work. Oh, uh -huh. oh um, and to the folks out there mentioning that uh, the morays shouldn't be out in the open, you know, tropical morays are a little bit more active than uh, the California morays that I've seen. So in uh, Baja, when I've been diving in Cabo Pulmo, I've actually seen morays swimming out in the open pretty frequently they're not really up in the water column like that but i you do see them moving around between different cracks uh looking for looking for food oh and those of you asking what the smaller fish are i didn't get a close look at them but from the patterning on them i believe those are some cleaner wrasses um <gasps> little crab friend cleaner wrasses usually have those colors on them so that uh, the other fish know that you are there to as the cleanup crew as the pit crew look at those god beams it's trying to get a better look at these ones over here but so cool oh raptor of war you're attending ucsc 
Uh, this oh her name oh I just remember Professor Rita Meda, Rita Meda M E H T A. Um, yeah, congrats, Chapter Four. I'm a slug. Go slugs. Awesome. Oh, we're into the next room. This is so completely cool. unexplored territory, Emily. Are you sure you don't want to like? Slow I'm a down little and nervous. Pause in one spot? <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Ooh, I don't it know got what's a little bit darker. Here. Yeah. Got a little bit darker. Ooh. My guess is that I am supposed to swim towards the light. <gasps> Yeah, I would imagine we have to swim towards the light. So very much like a squid <laughs> there, Emily, uh, or any That's of those true. nocturnal animals that have a diel vertical migration where they are light activated, uh, <laughs> swimming away or towards the light as needed. Whoa, it's a portal. Ooh. Oh, and you just casually dive into it. No fear. <laughs> <laughs> as one <Nice>. does. <gasps> We're in the eye of the ocean. Oh, shoot. No, that's a Nautilus up there. It's a Nautilus up there. <sighs> Emily, where are we? Oh, are those like the two Nautilus that I collected before? Or? I believe so. Look at the fractals in that roof. I feel like Elsa. Dang. Yeah, um, for those of you who are mentioning that they know Rita Meta or Professor Meta directly, um, I uh, at one point was uh, doing some video editing in the di the UCSC dive lab, uh, and the first time that I ever met her was her coming uh, over to the door, knocking on the door, opening up, and telling me that I needed to be quiet, that I was being too loud in my narration of the video that I was doing. <laughs> um, so look at us now. <laughs> still doing what I'm doing. She's still doing what she's doing. So <laughs> even back then, people... <laughs> You're being a little bit over enthusiastic on the microphone there, Pat. And I made a career out of it. So shout out, uh, Professor Meta. Sorry for bothering <laughs> you back when doing some real science as I made a silly video for the dive office. <laughs> oh. <gasps> what is happening? Look, the manta rays. Yes. Mobula. And manta rays. So cool. Man, shout out game devs. It just feels so magical. Yeah, the water level. <gasps> oh, there you go. what? <gasps> Beatrix. You did it. We win, right? That was it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> whole game. <laughs> <laughs> It feels like we're winning. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at the coral on your, on the sea mount there on the pinnacle. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. Oh, we got some, we got some jacks going by. Those are some jacks. Oh. The jack school and the manta rays. Okay, we are in Mexico now. Are, are you going to ride the Manta? Can you ride the Manta? Are you riding the Manta already? I was and I just don't try. see it yet. Uh, oh gosh. Okay, hold on. I think I pressed the wrong button to try and ride a Manta. <laughs> are you winning, Sunfish? <laughs> I'm an evolutionary marvel. Yeah, I <laughs> see it over there, Raptor of War. Nice. Oh, this is so great. There are too many buttons. <gasps> One of them will work. Got some giant Trevally. Yeah, so Trevally jacks I've seen. Oh. Well. Now, don't do this in the wild. No. Oh, Emily, this is so cool. But please don't do this in the wild. Leave the manta rays to swim. Manta rays are truly one of the most incredible types of shark. I mean, just imagine a flattened shark becoming a 12 foot 20 foot how big can they get at least 12 foot at behemoths 12 feet. Yeah. yeah yeah um and uh, friends of mine who've gone diving off of the socorro islands off of uh 24 hours actually off of the tip of baja have gotten to dive with these massive manta rays that are out there 
apparently they love bubbles. So if you're blowing your bubbles, they'll come up and, oh, we had a big amber jack there on the right. Oh, this is so cool. Let's go find the amber jack for you. There it is. Look at the amber jack. Or is it a rooster fish? I think it might be a rooster fish. Look at that fin. That oh, yeah, that's a, a rooster fish. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there it is. Wow. I actually got to see some rooster fish just this last year diving uh, in Cabo Pulmo. Uh, and it was in water where there was a dolphin that came to play. Um, rooster fish were so cool. They're so fast. Um, and they were hanging out in front of the big jack school out there. So this is definitely giving me Cabo Pulmo of Cortez vibes. Look at that rooster fish. Um, oh, are they a shark? Sorry, uh, yeah. I, I, you, I meant to say a flat <laughs> shark for the manta rays. Yeah, so uh, uh, manta rays are chondrichthians, so in the same in the same group as sharks, skates, and rays, obviously. Oh, but look at how look at how they have different patterns on them, Emily, for the different individuals. Yeah, that's so cool. And of course, they have those big cephalic fins on the front of their face to help them catch plankton. Yes. Wow. This is so neat. This is super rad. Oh, did who was? Uh, oh, what are those called? Unicorn fish, right? Did, wait, hold on. Did I? Miss? I think the ones that swam by. They're a type of. They're. Uh, I think they're called unicorn fish. Oh man, once we start getting into too many of the tropical species, I'm going to start struggling. But... Yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. Look at all the rooster fish. Yeah, and it looks like the rays are filter feeding. Yeah, so um, the big manta rays yeah. that you see there, they love to feed on plankton. Um, and so, like you were saying there, the cephalo fins there on the front, they help funnel food there into the mouth and then they use the gill rakers so basically a pasta strainer in the gills of uh the ray to help filter out the the food there from the environment so basically have a built-in uh pasta strainer there in the front of their face yeah going by catching the plankton soup and yeah just as a reminder to everybody out there uh no need to send us any spoilers um in the chat there thanks to the mods for cutting it uh, cutting them out. I found, uh, your, I found your unicorn fish. Unicorn fish. Yes. They're related to trigger fish, right? Um, good question. Let's see. Let's see what do we got? I don't. Okay. Unicorn fish might be the wrong common name. Maybe. Um. Nope. It is okay. unicorn fish. Oh, it's a nasso. It's a type of tang, I think. Oh. Hold on. Huh. Just oh, it's a crest fish. Crest fish. Oh, these tropical fish. Once you start getting in the tropics, you start looking at uh, things that are, you know, there, I think there's 25,000 species of fish, and the majority of them are in the tropics. So. We're gonna start getting into some complications for myself mm -hmm. here coming up. Def I think there's more like uh, forty thousand species of fish, my dude. What did I just quote then? Twelve to twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. I know, but what? Okay, twenty-five thousand is a thing. That might be the number, or is the percentage mm -hmm. or the types? Anyway, yeah, there's okay. There's a lot of fish species, is <laughs> yeah. what I mean to say, <laughs> and the vast majority Tens are found in, on coral reefs and in tropics, and so I'm gonna start suffering here. Sorry, everybody. They're also called unicorn tangs. Okay, yes, there unicorn we go. Unicorn tangs. Yeah. Related to surgeon fish and tangs. Okay, there we thank go. Thank you, chat. I, I found a way for us to fix this problem, Pat. <gasps> Rooster fish. <laughs> oh, they're so cool. They are so majestic in the open ocean. So, oh, so uh, Emily. Yeah. In, in the game here, you know, in Animal Crossing, we have the sock. So this is the shork. <laughs> the seat of enhanced oceanographic <laughs> recognition and knowledge. I just came up with that off the dome. Okay, hold Wait, on. Wait, hold on. That, how is how is that short? 
It's the seat. short. It's the seat. Seat. S. You said seat uh, of enhanced. Heightened. Height, of heightened. heightened. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the O for of. So yeah, C seat of heightened. Oceanographic. Or, yeah, oceanographic recognition <laughs> and knowledge. <laughs> Boom, add that to the wiki. We got the short. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking good. Looking very good. Yeah, there we go. Unicorn fish. Well, I love sitting on the shark. Okay, so unicorn fish, unicorn tang. So I was right, it was a unicorn fish. Oh, there's a black manta. <gasps> Those are the ones that you see off of the Socorros, how it's all completely black on the back. They're the same type of giant open ocean manta. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. With its labriform swimming, swimming with its pectoral fins. Yellowtail snapper. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're definitely in the Sea of Cortez now. Oh, the giant Trevally, also known as Jacks every so often. Uh, Trevally Jacks, people will call them. Uh, the ones that you find in Cabo Pulmo are big eye Trevally Jacks. I love our little yellow. I'm a snapper. <laughs> <laughs> Massive manta rays going through, pushing the kelp aside. <laughs> And yeah, those are pilot fish, right? The other ones there? Yeah, those yeah. should be around the mantas. Yeah. You're right. Pilot fish tend to hang out around the mouths uh, and the gills of great whites and mantas. There to gather up little bits of food there on the side. So cool. Great job meditating there, Emily. Thank you. That was a good meditation on the shark. <laughs> the seat of heightened oceanographic <laughs> knowledge and relax ocean. What about that? Yeah. What's that? We should have relax ocean. Seat of uh, heightened oceanographic relax ocean and knowledge. And knowledge. Okay. Yeah, let's fix that. All right, let's adjust. <laughs> seat of heightened oceanographic relaxation and knowledge that's canon can we dive through the floor is that a thing I'm gonna try <laughs> dive through the floor no I can't dive through the floor you're gonna Ooh. clip clip through the floor like Tim did on his one run yeah <laughs> Okay, can't clip through the floor. It's all good. That's okay. So cool. This is so great. Abzu Game Dev here. So gratifying to see Abzu being used to educate about the ocean. Thanks for excusing some of our artistic license with fish distribution and explaining how it would actually be. Hey, Matt. <laughs> That's so no cool. No worries. No, you know, yeah. you know, we have to point that out just because, you know, that's that's what the science <laughs> that's what the science training in us would say. But no, seriously, congratulations to your team. What an absolutely yeah. incredible, incredible experience. Yeah, this Matt, is so thank you so much for creating cool. a game like this. It's so cool. Oh, well, hey Matt, um, send us a DM on Twitter or something. We'd love to have you on the game with us if you wanted yeah. to do some Abzu yes, streaming yes, yes. with us. We'd love to chat with with you all about it. You can watch us play it very poorly and slowly and Yeah, if yeah. you if you want to be frustrated <laughs> at uh people playing games, uh totally, but we'd also love to talk with you about the ocean there, Matt. Thanks for watching over on YouTube. Yeah, send us a DM or something. Love to love to get you on stream or something. Yeah. This is, I mean, just as a diver in the kelp forest, this is just such an ode to 
a place that very few people get to explore, not only because kelp is usually in very cold water and accessible water, uh, but also, um, you know, not everyone has access to the ocean. And then even if you're there, it takes a lot uh, physiologically, economically, geographically to be able to get into the ocean. So I can definitely tell you as a diver in the kelp forest, this gives you similar feels to being in that kelp cathedral. Yeah. Really, really awesome stuff. Thanks, dev team, for tuning in. Yeah. All right, Pat, you ready to go? Are we ready to go? I think we talked about all the animals. All right. uh, well, I'd say it's time to go. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> go. We're never going to get tired of that pun. Ooh, spooky never. room. Very cool. Oh. Got some hieroglyphics. <gasps> little shark people. The shark people. Got a little whale friend there. Oh, there's our little Nautilus friends. So good. This is so neat. <gasps> Jellies, Patrick. Where are the jellies? Where are the jellies? Show me the jellies. Where are the They're jellies? Right here. <gasps> we They're go. Everywhere. There they are. <gasps> oh my goodness. Look at all of them. So this is actually what it, this it, is a it smack. does look like. This is a smack of jellies. It's a, it's a smack of jellies. And if you were a turtle, it'd be a snack of jellies too. Hey. So <laughs> uh, these jellies here, those look very much like crystal jellies to me. Kind of. They, I mean, they do have these long oral arms kind of coming down from them, which is they not do. quite uh, crystal jelly esque. So, yeah, so um, maybe the, more the, like a Noctiluca type. One thing, yeah. I mean, I don't know, Emily. They, they definitely, they've got like a cross of a Hydro Medusa in terms of how clear yeah. they are, and then yeah, a yeah, yeah. Skypho Medusa from having those long oral arms. Yeah, good noticing the oral arms there. Well, it seems like the oral cool. arms appear only on, on some of them. So maybe the oral arms were a snack for some of those turtles that we saw earlier. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <gasps> There's big ones They're and small so ones. So cool. This so, is rad. Yeah. So just um, to explain a little bit of the terminology that we're, we're using the, there, the um, jellies, when you're looking at them, they have basically two different types of tentacles. The ones on the, the outer ring of their body there, and then the ones that kind of come down from their gut in the center. And the ones that are coming down from the gut in the center are their oral arms, literally their mouth arms. So those are what's helping to bring food up and into its stomach. Um, also helping to get rid of waste. Um, also helping to uh, bring uh, gametes up and uh, to its gonads too um and out yeah. of its gonads, depending yeah on, and the on what's um, going on. the oral yeah. arms yeah basically imagine them as long lips coming out from yeah. the from the gut there in the center but also one thing i want to point out about these jellies is that they seem to have the radial canals going along the edges of them that look yeah. very similar to a type of jelly called aquiora and aquiora victoria is a type of a uh, jelly that um, has green fluorescent protein in them and actually <gasps> Uh, GFP, green fluorescent protein, was synthesized a while back. Um, so these ones probably don't have it, but GFP uh, is very, very useful for medical research because you can basically have um, bacteria produce enough GFP, or sorry, uh, cells that you have produce enough GFP that you can then track um, where cells are going throughout the body in the development process. You can kind of get um, organisms to produce uh, fluorescent under ultraviolet light uh, zones to them. And so that was discovered yeah. in that particular type of jelly, Aquiora, GFP, again, green fluorescent protein. So it's not bioluminescent, although yeah. they are also yeah. bioluminescent, but uh, the fluorescence comes from excitation of the protein and it gives you back green light under yeah. harsh blue light. So really, really uh, incredible stuff there. Yeah. So fluorescence um, in the way that uh, you might use like a black light um, to make different yes. things glow. So that would be fluorescent there where things are absorbing that black light and uh, getting excited and releasing uh, light out itself at different wavelengths. And which is why you see the different colors um, when you put different things under a black light there. Um, but such, yeah, an, an important um an important thing that we discovered in Equioras, but 
uh, they're using it to study things like Alzheimer's and cancer. So they're, they were able to take that green fluorescent protein and, um, and really put it to, to good use in humans, um, which is just yeah. incredible. And we have, we, we have questions about uh, ocean sunfish or molas, which are animals yeah. that would feed on jellies in the wild if we have any at the aquarium at the moment. Uh, no, we do not, but we just got an update that uh, we are working on uh, yeah. mola potentially. So um, there might be more mola updates in the future. Uh, there are molas in the Monterey Bay. They just need to be trained uh, to be able to feed from us and then we can put them into the open sea exhibit uh, and keep them for a while so yeah no molas at the moment no ocean sunfish at the aquarium currently but a uh, recent update from today that we might have one uh, soon? potentially question soon mark? question mark question mark <laughs> question mark yeah don't hold on don't hold your breath everybody like this abzu character is doing yeah. uh, <laughs> um, but uh, potentially they are in the monterey bay and we always try to get more molas when we can yeah Oh, this right. is so cool. Oh, what happened to them? Well, sometimes the, the molas stop feeding from us. Uh, they get stressed out or not interested in, in being in the aquarium anymore. So we release them back out to the wild with satellite tags so we can track them around. Yep. Um, so not to worry. Release back out to the ocean uh, for many of them. And then you may know that back in the day, we had molas that got so huge that we had to use helicopters <laughs> to release them back out into the wild. Um, so we try not to let them get that big anymore. Um, but yeah, so... The molas are one of those animals that are at the aquarium as visitors before they get returned back out into the ocean. Yes. Well, Emily, this is really cool. By the way, I would never do this. This is a thing that uh, underwater Pat, <laughs> my alter ego, <laughs> would never do, which is cave diving. Not interested. You want to no. hang out here with these stalagmites and stalactites? Uh, yeah. No, because as you saw, you were kicking there the sediment on the seafloor. And I know that for some cave diving, you can kick the sediment up and you go to zero visibility. You can't <gasps> find your way out of the cave. So oh, my gosh. I would not do that. Sorry. I know that you're on a, on a five second delay. There it is. There's the <laughs> shark friends destroyed robot friends. What? <laughs> Well, hold on. <laughs> I love that you we, could tell exactly when the delay happened because you heard my gasp and then yeah, five seconds of to, silence from Patrick on. and then his gasp. <laughs> hold on. We need we need to get Emery Nolasco from Mbari back on the phone there. Oh, my God. That one of the sharks just bit <laughs> one of our AUVs here. That's not good. Hey, thanks for the sub there. Leon Ezers, four months over on uh, Twitch Prime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, what? Yeah, that's not okay, shark friend. Just, do you know how expensive <laughs> underwater drones are? Do you know how few of them there are in the world? How many billions of dollars have been invested in space exploration compared to the ocean? Like, these things are few and far between. Come on. <laughs> what was that about? I mean, but it, I, it does happen. Sharks have bitten our AUVs before. Um, but but our, our poor little robot buddy. I'm glad that we didn't name our robot buddies. Uh, that would have been heartbreaking. Uh, but like we were talking about yesterday, if if you are an engineer creating robots to be put in the ocean, um, you you don't put anything in the ocean that you don't want to lose, uh, basically. So every time you put a robot in the ocean or any type of scientific piece of equipment in the ocean, there is always a, a very big chance that it's not going to come back to you. So <laughs> I guess... <laughs> I guess uh, our our little robot friend um, was just it was just channeling its inner cephalopod, Patrick. It was exactly yeah, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. living no, fast, dying young, dying young. Yeah. You know, being being mechanically upgraded to a top predator. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I mean that was rather shocking, just because we literally just talked to an AUV engineer yesterday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as as Sarah is mentioning in the chat, yeah. Um, uh, Emery's specific large AUVs have never been interrogated by the local shark population uh, because they're just a little bit too big. Uh, hers are um, uh, weigh a ton and are uh, how many feet long? 12 feet long? 20 feet long? I forget exactly how big they are. They're hers, huge. Hers are 18 feet long. Hers are yeah, 18, they right. Have to okay, fit yeah. inside, they have to fit inside of a shipping container. That's yeah. right. And so yeah. the, the smaller ones, the long range AVs are the ones that have been investigated by the sharks. That's right, Sarah, in the chat there mentioned. Yeah. That. Uh, well, let's get some Fs in the chat real quick for Robot Friend <laughs> before we head out into the big blue. I Just also GGs appreciate... to Robot Friend, some yeah. Fs. 
Sarah, um, Sarah was suggesting that we name them breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which is just too soon. <laughs> okay, too well, soon. so breakfast. Is yeah, so <laughs> breakfast is gone. So long. Bre- breakfast was brunch. <laughs> oh, rough. But yeah, F's in the chat for robot friend. Thank you, oh, shark friend. No. Uh, very similar to what happens in the Monterey Bay every so often when one of those big sharks decides to go over and take a closer look at one of our long-range AUVs there. <laughs> I hope you know that I swim through every arc I love, I see now. By the way, Sorry, over on YouTube, Andy F is giving a reluctant F in the chat. But I should point out, Andy, that your last name is literally F. F. So it's F's in the chat. Um, (laughs) That's what we do here. That's what we got to do. F's are always in the chat for Andy. If we're going to be gamers, we got to respect the gamer memes, all right? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh. Well, this is really, so this is the type of environment that I find fascinating diving in is when you're over deep water like that. Oh, but okay. There's an eyeball thing. (laughs) It's an eyeball thing looking at us, but I mean, we can go over the, the big blue over here. Oh no, just, uh, (gasps) it's, I think, are those, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are we looking at? Hold on, hold on. Are those barracuda? Ooh, barracuda. Oh, no, those are Wahoo. Oh, those are Wahoo. Yeah, those are Wahoo. Cool. <gasps> Ooh. Man, you got to you gotta Ooh, love the game that has some Wahoo in it. So cool. That's so how cool. Deep, how deep down can you go in here, Emily? Let's find out. Very cool. Yeah, so now we're more in an open ocean environment. This is some of my favorite things to dive in where you can't see the bottom and you're just hovering in that midwater, especially when it's clear water. Oh, I'm uh, going pretty far down. Whoa, we're still going. We're still going. Whoa. That's so cool. Look how far down we went. Whoa. Let's see if I can, like, look up. Yeah, kind of. Wait, are you pretending to be a ambush predator? This is literally what a shark would do, oh, looking wait. up towards the surface, I trying to find silhouettes. I think that's something over there. What's over where? I can't see it. Oh, I found another one of our little Nautilus buddies. Find a Nautilus buddy, friend. And then... Yeah! yeah. I, heard, I heard you get the achievement before I saw you get the achievement. <laughs> um, I don't know if we this were is rad. To... Are, are there biodiversity... Uh, orbs I don't on know. the bottom here. We're gonna find out. There's so many lobsters, though. Wait, that wasn't a rock. It was a rock lobster. Uh, uh, that's a pun counter. Oh, oh, my robot suit won't let me go that far. Okay, I will turn it back. Look at all of them. Oh, Raptor of War. Sorry. Uh, <gasps> wait, we, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 Patrick, whoa, 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 Patrick, what? Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. What? There are horseshoe crabs. Get out. Look at the little buddies. <gasps> horseshoe crabs. Yes. <gasps> oh, man. Look at it wiggle. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, the horseshoe crab wiggle there. Uh, I mean, a very lucky discovery there, this horseshoe crab there, Emily, but... Look at our little, like, main lobster <laughs> crawfish friends <laughs> walking around there as well. Wait, Patrick, this look is at definitely these fish. an East Coast seafloor. Look at What's these going on? fish swimming by. Which ones? The fish. The only fish that are in, in the front of the screen there. Oh, I was looking at them. I couldn't see them very close. Oh, fi- I'll try and find more. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. I think there what might we... be a little biodiversity portal over here, real quick. It looks like there's a biodiversity portal over there on the left. Look at this little horseshoe crab party. Oh my gosh, I love it. Laying their eggs for the migratory <gasps> birds. We found the leatherbacks. We found the leatherback Get sea turtles. Out. <gasps> oh, They're going to go eat the jellies. We are. have leatherbacks in the Monterey Bay right now, everybody. Leatherbacks oh. are in the Monterey Bay. They nest over in Indonesia on those black sand beaches, and then they travel thousands and thousands of miles to come over to hang out with us, feasting on our sea nettles that we have here in the Monterey Bay and local whale watch boats have been seeing tons of leatherback turtles recently. Oh, so cool. This is so cool. I got to say, it feels like, <laughs> what, what's the name? What's the name of a group of leatherback turtles? Is it a biker gang because <laughs> of all the leather? <laughs> what would be a good um, collective noun for a leatherback turtle? Hmm.
blue suede turds? No. <laughs> <laughs> Shells oh, angels. Oh, Emily, that is so good. <laughs> Shells, angels. I'm not in pun jail. I get I have a get out free card <laughs> all the time. Wow. Okay, I was wow, to that was so cool. Is there more biodiversity? Okay, no, so that was only, I think shells, that was angels, or leatherback turtles. Let's yeah, do that. But I think that they're are these supposed to be lantern fish? Maybe down here. They've got that real rounded head. Let me see. Hold on. Oh. And did you see them like? Are they mctophids? Yeah, I think they. I guess they would be. So lanternfish, everybody. Those are fish that, like the name implies, uh, make their own light. But I think that's not the reason that they were called lanternfish. They, I think they were called that because they're so oily that they were used um, as oil. And yep, those are lanternfish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, because you oh, can see the so bioluminescence cool. yeah. that they have bouncing off their bellies there. The lanternfish can tell males and females apart from that and species apart from that. And they also have those luminescent organs called photophores on their bellies to help mask their shadow um, in the downwelling light. So they actually downwell when they want to the same intensity of light as the background light so that they can basically play hide and seek by hiding in front of the tree and just having their belly say tree in the light that gets bounced out. Oh, this is so, oh, so cool. Okay. Okay, I guess we should swim back up in the water column. No, but what if Maybe. there's another thing on the bottom? I mean, I can always dive down again, Patrick. Let's go dive you don't down have again. to ask me twice. <laughs> Uh, sorry, yeah, not McTofu, <laughs> McTofu. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a special you can get fries on the side with. No, McTofids, M Y. Here, let me spell it. McTofid. <laughs> McTofu. <laughs> ba that's, that's ba what I, yeah. I love this fish. <laughs> that's what I get when I go to McDonald's. It's a McTofu. <laughs> McTofid. Oh, that's a good one. That's very good. Okay, I don't think that there are any more. Oh, uh, Celestina. Oh, uh, liminal haunt. Uh, I'll be feeding the fish in the Kelp Force exhibit tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. 10 yeah. a.m. Uh, and you can watch that on our website. And then hopefully, if there aren't any breaks, it'll also be live here on Twitch and YouTube. Um, but uh, every so often there's there can be a technical hiccup with that webcam. But it's definitely going to be on our website, monterebayaquarium.org. But... Uh, we're going to do our darndest. Emily, as always, the superhero of pushing out those uh, cams. <laughs> Fixing the on tech Thursday problems mornings. on this side. Yeah. Yeah. So we never know. Sometimes we've had some issues with the Cal Forest cam recently. But Look at this it should friend. Be Look at our green sea turtle friend. Leatherback sea turtle friend. Oh, is that the leatherback? That's the leatherback. Look at those oh, ridges. Oh, I couldn't see it. Sorry. It doesn't have the normal scoops. Oh, yeah. it is the leatherback. Look at it. <gasps> Look at those pectoral fins. It's front flippers, I should say. <laughs> yeah, um, if you need, if you have any homework, everybody from this stream, uh, tab over and Google leatherback sea turtle throat, and uh, hopefully you are a sound sleeper <laughs> before you do that. <laughs> look at our leatherback turtle friend going to look for some. There's some jellies, jellies. Oh. a smack snack, as the chat said before. Emily, you found the leatherbacks. I did. Okay, I'm very happy now. So we good. we can swim up to the creepy eyeball. Okay, creepy eyeball time. Here we go. And then we'll think about whatever happens after creepy eyeball. It might be time to <laughs> slowly trend downwards and and end the stream in about uh, 15, 20 minutes here. Yeah. Spoopy. <laughs> so, ooh, spoopy. <laughs> <laughs> the commentary people expect from yeah. <laughs> Mario Bitcoin social it's media. High, high quality, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did it. We are we are seasoned pros over here. So. Seasoned pros. Yeah. <laughs> Sp spoopy games Wednesday, yeah. Only spoopy games for the aquarium on on Wednesdays. <laughs> oh man, we got a cutscene. 
Oh, looks like we're we're uh, harming Liminal Hunt's uh, wallet with our uh, merch store yeah. there. <laughs> Digging into uh, their leather. Yeah, speaking the, of, <laughs> shop, yeah. shop.monterebayaquarium.org. Yeah, it looks like um, you got a couple of greenbacks in your leather uh, wallet for the leatherback turtles. <gasps> Who do we have here in front of us? Oh, we're right in an occurrence path. Oh, Look get at out. us go so fast. We're on a drift dive. Oh, there's some snapper. Well, snapper coming with us now. Whee. Whoa, Emily crushing it. Snapper friends. I'm not doing anything. I'm, although I will take the credit. This is just the cutscene <laughs> going. Oh, going it's the cutscene here. Uh, well, I kind of swam oh, look into at the, the current. Well, there. we got the um the po uh, oh the parrotfish. There's the wahoo again. Garibaldi. Snapper. Oh, the Wahoo is so sick. Look at the dolphins. Yes, the dolphins. Let's go. Let's go. What's up, mammals? Let's go. Yeah, first mammal <laughs> sighting besides us in the game. Yeah. yeah common, common dolphins Commons. going by. Yeah. Probably Two different types of common, common dolphins. dolphins. Yeah, we get the long beaked common dolphins most commonly here in Monterey. Although not the most common of all of the dolphins that we get here in Monterey, but we don't tend to see the short-beaked ones that often, but these look like short-beaked. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. Going through... Oh, um, this reminds me, if you folks could go over to Mbari's YouTube channel, M-B-A-R-I, uh, they have a new animation of the Deep Sea Canyon that we have out yeah. here in our backyard in the Monterey Bay, kind of reminiscent of this there. There was a little raccoon fish and a surgeon fish our got our tangs things. our snapper <gasps> shark friend <gasps> what's up shark buddy i will currently shark not so much of a friend you destroyed breakfast <laughs> <laughs> that's true you made breakfast brunch but i'm trying not to hold that against you oh this is so cool <gasps> this is so neat <gasps> going up through the volcanic tube and emerging. This is so cool. Oh, we are fully in the tropics now. Oh my gosh. Those bat fish. <gasps> You're going <gasps> to something I haven't seen yet. Oh, look at the coral. Look at it, bat. Who, who's that? Who's that on the left? Who's that on the left? Wait. I don't even oh. know what kind of fish those are. Are those hatchet fish? Those are hatchet fish, my dude. What? Hatchet fish hanging out? Not in the deep sea? All right. That's fine. Tight. Thank you, devs. Thank you, Matt, if you're still watching and the rest of the, <laughs> the devs out there. Um, oh, and yeah, sorry. Raptor of War pointed out that we missed the missed the pun of uh, crushing it when you were in the oh, yes. in the current there. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, there's some, uh, some Nassau tangs. I don't think yeah. those are blue tangs specifically. They're a type of tang. Not the drink. Dolphin squeak. You can hear the dolphins echolocate? Yeah. Making little whistles? Making their little whistles and clicks. Oh, this is rad. Let's just swim around here till the end of the, the hour here and then move on from here on the next step. What do you think, Emily? Yeah, I like that idea. Oh, look at the corals. <laughs> Emily just swims down into the eddy to go look at the <laughs> algae. <laughs> you nerd. I just want to see what was there. Look at the algae. <laughs> Yeah, there are corals, but have you seen that algae? Wow. Oh, oh, huge barrel coral. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? I'm on the delay. I know I you're know. on the delay, but I opened Puffers. one of the, the, yeah, fugu. the portals. We got some fugu. Awesome. <laughs> Matt, Matt is pointing out on YouTube that the hatchet fish are supposed to stay down in that deep tunnel. Get back down there. <laughs> <laughs> All good hatchet fish. You know, whichever way you chop that, it, it, it yeah. was totally fine to have the hatchet fish. They were fish. just trying to hatchet a plan to escape. <laughs> they, they were, yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait, is this the spoopy tunnel that we just came out of? Or is this a is new tunnel? Is that spoopy tunnel? tunnel? This is a new tunnel. <gasps> Patrick. I don't even know what you're looking at yet, but you're going. 
Oh, garden eel That's friends. Right. Yes. Hey, buddies. Look at our garden eel friends, everyone. Oh my gosh, they go down when you get close to them. Yes, this yes. is just like what it looks like in the wild, where they just go straight down. <laughs> like oh. that. Oh. Those poor unfortunate souls. Always reminded of Little <laughs> Little Mermaid when you see these. Look at them go. Wiggle. So this is exactly what um, you know the what garden eels would be doing out out there in the wild inside of the exhibit that we have at the aquarium where yeah. they would all be hanging out and big big colonies of hundreds sometimes thousands of of garden eels and they just kind of sway in the water and do their best impression of of surf grass of, of sea grass beds yeah you and, know emily um the French philosopher Voltaire once said that happiness is tending to one's own garden, but I think that happiness is actually attending to one's own garden eels because yeah. this made me so happy. <laughs> Look at see. them go. Oh, <laughs> they're so great. And this is what they look like in the wild. They, like the current would be going in this particular area. They'd be going from left to right. You can see how they're all pointing there in yeah. the same direction. That's what they'd be doing in the wild. And they just slink down and they'll hide and they won't come out as long as you're over them. So when I've tried to film them, I've put my camera in the middle of them and then swam away uh, to see if they would pop up in front of the camera eventually. Um, this is so cool. These are the best. I found you know, these garden eels gave me all of the garden feels you know <laughs> is that breakfast uh, i think it's a breakfast replacement so maybe this one's protein shake <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was gonna call it mimosa but i guess we went, we went different directions we went on that two emily very different directions <laughs> you can tell where both of us are at in our quarantine journey oh, right man, now yeah. okay yeah protein <laughs> shake nice way to shame me <laughs> Me and Mimosa are going to go hang out over here on the side and just enjoy the garden eels. <laughs> Why you got to do me like that on stream, Emily? <laughs> you called your own self out, man. Oh, that's true. I'm telling on myself. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, a mimosa is champagne and uh, some type of fruit juice. For those of you who are under 21, <laughs> please, <laughs> please imbibe, please imbibe uh, please. responsibly. <gasps> I know. You just Coconut saw the worms. thing that I just gasped at. <laughs> Whoa, cool. Look at those worms. Oh, two worms. They're the best. So those are the feeding oral uh, tentacles of a worm there. Uh, super cool. So great. Wait, are those giant clams over there? Donde? Is that? Where, where am I looking? Aki. I'm on the delay. Oh, well, you got some brain coral. Yeah, we got some giant yeah. clams. Do they close when you get close? To yeah. Yes, they do. Oh, that's so cool. So giant clams are, um, you can see how the inside there, the mantle there is purple. Uh, and that is, they come in absolutely gorgeous colors with browns and blues and purples and greens because uh, giant clams, just like corals, um, even though they're mollusks and corals are cnidarians, they have a symbiotic relationship with a type of alga known as a dinoflagellate, similar to the type of uh, dinoflagellates that, uh, or in the same group as the dinoflagellates that were making that bioluminescence, but the specific kind that live in symbiosis are known as zooxanthellae. And uh, they basically feed the giant clams from the sun. So they're, it's like having your own little uh, solar power plant inside your body, feeding them from the sun. So giant clams will also eat plankton, but they can get most of their food from the bright sunlight. Great job seeing those clams, Emily. I didn't even notice them. There's so many little details in here. <gasps> More eels. Different eels. I don't know where gardenia. Oh, can we meditate? Can we meditation? <laughs> yeah. Can we meditate real quick <laughs> on the shore? <laughs> Let's sit up. Look at yeah, are those ribbon at, eels? Yeah, they're ribbon eels. That's why I paused here because oh, I knew that you would want Ribbon eels are so cool. Look at their they're also little noses. Look yeah. at that. 
the feathery noses is definitely a, i've seen uh, ribbon eels in indonesia um absolutely gorgeous when they swim uh, look up ribbon eel swimming everybody if you need some uh some homework for some yeah well just some just some ocean joy in your life oh my goodness yeah, yeah. oh this is so great Okay, but we need to sit on uh, on the seat of enhanced oceanographic relaxation and knowledge here real quick just to Wee. see who we got. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> I like that you're also like cleaning out the, the sand real yeah. quick. Just like, oh, let me just brushing it off. Who we got? Who we got? Emperor angelfish. Nice. Um, one of my favorite angelfish uh, is one that's endemic to the Sea of Cortez called the Cortez angelfish. Yeah. Um, absolutely gorgeous fish. Angelfish are so pretty. Looks like we had a bump head wrasse or two. Yeah, a second ago, yeah. There Who we dat? go. Another there angelfish. we go with the hump head wrasse. Yeah. Oh, look at the Antheus. Whoa. That was a beautiful, beautiful pink Antheus, I believe. So this wrasse, you'll recognize very, very similar to the sheephead that we saw originally at the start of the game. Those labrids swim with their pectoral fins largely, also their tail fins here. So uh, when they swim with their tail fin, that's known as coringiform swimming. Uh, also, when they make a bad joke and swim away from it, that's known as cringiform swimming. <laughs> I just made that one up. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Sure. And uh, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um. Oh, okay. More emperor angelfish. Uh, um, but labrids tend to swim with their front pectoral fins. It's known as labrid swimming there too. Yeah. Humphead wrasse. You'll also recognize if any of you play Animal Crossing. That is one of the fish that you can catch in it. I think they call it Napoleon fish. Look at the lyre tail anthias. That's what it is. Oh, they're so pretty. Gorgeous. Who dat? Who we got? Oh, the angelfish. Yeah, okay. it's going to the angelfish and humphead wrasse a lot. Let's see okay. here. Papatita. Some meditation going. Papatita. Who are the... Are those snapper? The other ones that were in that same school, I think... Oh, we got coral trout. Coral trout. Huh. Who are you? Oh, you're a type of uh, you're a type of grouper. A cabria is what they would call it in Southern California, I believe. Just based oh, off the okay. fish model. Okay, okay. Cabria. Cabria. I know yeah. cabria. I just didn't know. Be a type of serranid coral as well. Trout. Yeah. I, I mean, like you can it. tell with that body plan of theirs how they're related to to them got beautiful that big big wide mouth that's way down low on their face <laughs> this is just so fascinating Look at these just to see all the models doing their thing oh yeah we got some are those uh they are threadfin butterfly fish okay butterfly fish and i love the tall um the tall sponges and coral as well. A little azure damselfish. Yeah, this is this, this is, is awesome. This is so <laughs> peaceful and wonderful. Those were trigger fish. Go back. Oh yeah, those are some trigger fish over oh, there. But there's the Nassau tang right to the left there. So cool. Oh, banner fish. Okay. Oh, banner fish. Yes. So they look very similar to Moorish idols, but uh, Moorish idols are, uh, there's only one type of Moorish idol around the whole world. Um, and so banner fish look very, very similar to them, but Moorish idols gill in finding nemo has a much longer face fyi so um yeah banner fish i couldn't tell if they were more shadows or not before you zoomed in nice 
Another streamer said that the hump head rats look like Ron Perlman. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, it'd be uh, Shell Boy. <laughs> Shell Bowie. Right? That's a Ron Perlman character. He played Hellboy, right? Oh, no, Emily's gone. <laughs> she walked away from the street. No, I was just deeply sighing off in the corner. Sorry. Sorry, Pat. Uh, no, I was uh, reading some of the comments in chat there. Um, uh, yeah, Andy over on, on, on YouTube, the, uh, the game audio is going to, sorry, not the game audio, but Patrick and I, uh, are going to be a little bit off in what yes. you're seeing on screen simply because I'm playing it in real life and Patrick is watching the stream with all of you since we are in two different locations. <laughs> and, yes. uh, so he is seeing the stream on the same delay as everyone else. Yeah, um, this is quarantine yeah. content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we, yeah, we might set up some tech at some point where we'll have a little bit less yeah, lag. But a little you know, bit less lag. Bad. Yeah, we it's haven't. Not too bad. We're yeah. out. Haven't got our oh, a powder blue scored. tang. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gorgeous. All right. Is it time, Emily? I think it might be time, Pat. It's, it might be time. I mean, yeah. not to say that we're anywhere near done, but yeah. we did get further than last time. Who was that long fish that just swam by? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, shout out by if, if the devs are still in the chat over there on YouTube, shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for creating such a beautiful and peaceful game uh, in Abzu. Uh, what a masterpiece and definitely gives me feelings of being underwater from, from watching it. Thank you for your attention to detail. Super incredible. So if the devs are still watching. I mean, from us at the Monterey Bay Aquarium as a teaching tool while we are currently closed to the coronavirus i mean really awesome uh emily you're riding on a dolphin i'm riding obviously. on a dolphin breaching the Marine Mammal the protection water. act precludes us I'm from sorry. doing this in the wild but <laughs> but in the game i can live my <laughs> dreams <laughs> uh absolutely amazing stuff um so i don't know emily if you have any uh parting uh words for us i did just want to say uh, once again if you are just tuning in thank you so much everybody for uh being a part of uh, the ocean community and also to everybody here uh, around California, but especially here in our local uh, communities from um, Santa Cruz County uh, and um, you know, the, the Santa Cruz Mountains, Salinas. Uh, oh, who do we have I'm here on, sorry. The, on the street? I'm sorry. I had to press it one more time. We have more porpoise. It's we have some porpoises. They're Vaquita. They're Vaquita. They're actual Vaquita? They're actual Vaquita. Nice. Well, that's more in this game than there exists in real life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Quite honestly, yeah. Which is why I'm freaking out. That's super cool. Well, um, in any case, we're so glad we, we've been able, hopefully, to share uh, some good moments, some, some escapist moments from everything that's going on around uh, uh, out there, I just hope that everybody out there that is affected by the current fires in Monterey County um, or in the Monterey Bay area, I should say, Santa Cruz County, Monterey County, and uh, everybody else that is affected currently, I hope you're staying safe uh, and able to, um, yeah, just uh, enjoy a little bit of time with us. If you are watching uh, in the ocean with Abzu, we'll be sending more uh, good vibes to everybody out there, and then we'll be bringing you more content uh, very soon. Stay tuned on Friday for an Animal Crossing stream with some of our friends from Black yeah. AF and STEM. We're going to have uh, Aaron McGee playing with us and talking about reptiles and birds uh, that are missing from Animal Crossing. Also joined by uh, Chelsea and Danielle that you may have seen from our uh, Black Birders Week stream. So they'll be there uh, chatting alongside with us. So tune in on Friday at uh, 3 p.m. for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing some more Abzu streams when I am back. I'm out next week, but uh, stay tuned for Octodad, right, Emily? Yeah, so we are definitely going to be playing at least once next week, um, depending on Rachel's schedule. So um, it'll be Rachel and I nerding out during Octodad next week. Um, once, possibly twice. We'll see how things work out. Uh, but then the week after that, Pat will be back and we'll be kind of back to our normal streams and figure out what else we're going to do. Um, yeah, this has been so much fun and it's been a wonderful afternoon to spend with all of you. Um, we mentioned it at the beginning of the stream, but in case you weren't here, just another reminder to, to please be kind to yourselves. Please be kind to your fellow humans on this planet during these very, very um, 
challenging times and we love you all very very much absolutely yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. we can get some ggs in the chat for emily some w's for uh playing the game while we commentate uh some uh some w's over on youtube whatever you feel like for the developers thank you so much for watching we'll have more episodes of abzu coming up because we have a few vaquitas swimming around there uh behind you um emily <laughs> this is the yeah. the best i yeah we're gonna spend at least like 10 20 minutes talking about vaquita on the next stream that we do with abzu because yeah i absolutely yeah absolutely yeah absolutely yeah okay all right thanks okay. so much everyone We'll see you again soon. Bye.